in the studio with it on switch and I recently uh, released my Leon switch ambient sample series volume one which I might just add thank you so much everybody for the support that has been amazing so I hope you're all enjoying the pack I had a couple of questions um, I did a couple of videos for YouTube where I showed using the pack using Lunaris 2 by Lufgrim and by using VCV rack some of the um, units in there with it and people were asking a couple of people asked about how I make the pads before they enter the before they get to the sample to the sample pack so I thought today we could um, answer that question uh, one of the questions was do I play chords do I record chords do I record single notes if so what notes do I do um, really simple really 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 simple I just do one note of uh, one really long note so for 30 seconds of a note and then I um, I can then translate that across the keyboard then when I sample it and I can then play it play chords or whatever I want to do afterwards if I'm to record the chords initially then um, I'm stuck with that chord wicked all right so without further ado Let's get this music up in the background, which I might add is one of the construction kits from the ambient sample pack. Would you for it? Okay, so as per usual, I have Ableton open, uh, and today we've I've set up a camera on my MicroFreak. So this unit here is um, I made a lot of the pads um, using this this MicroFreak. Um, brilliant. Brilliant unit. Um, I, I haven't had a lot of joy with making basses with it, but um, for ambient stuff, for ambient pads and for lead noises and stuff like that, it's it's a lovely, lovely unit. Uh, very reasonably priced as well. I think they're becoming cheaper and cheaper all the time. And they've just updated the firmware and added a load more features to it. So um, so yeah, so if you're into sound design, that's, that's your one. That's pretty sick. Uh, my apologies for the curviness on the video. It's um, on, the, on the video of the, of the Micro Freak. Um, I got it so you can see everything in there, but I'm afraid the I'm using a 360 camera, and it's super wide. Um, so cool. All right. So basically, what I've got is I've also got then at the bottom here. I've recently got this um, Micro Freak. I think it was from Nora's patches. Yeah, Nora patches. Uh, it's the Micro Freak uh, Max for Life device uh, controller, basically, and it works a treat. It means I can treat the Micro Freak pretty much like a VST. So you'll see that if I turn the, the dial here and it corresponds to the orange dial on the on the micro freak and you can see on the display there that it's it's changing. It's so good. And I can do the same in reverse. So if I if I turn this, you can see the the dial on the on Nora's devices there, that's changing, and you can see it's doing the same sort of thing. Brilliant. Super handy. And uh, it's better for for me for automation and stuff like that. Um so yeah, so well, I've got it loaded on, on an init, initial initialized patch, an init patch you can see on the display there uh, which then ties up pretty much with with Nora's thing here I might just adjust these so that they're all the same so we can see exactly where we're at there we go we'll just turn all these down that can go up to 127 that's fine um, there we go that's not full that's gonna be for 63 there nice so everything's pretty much as you see the same on both on, on both the screens uh, I'll do most of the controlling via this but there might be a few bits I do with my my hands on here you know um, so yeah cool so uh, the one of the ways I like to start is just with a just a raw noise and get the shape. So um, so so yeah, and also one of the other things that I like to have on initially, so that so that it creates a bit more of an atmosphere with it all is um, let's turn that off for two seconds. Yeah. Is the supermassive? The Valhalla supermassive is free, and you need to go get it. It's it's such a, a space reverb. It's brilliant. Um, I have my own settings that I've set up for it. Um, I've got a, a patch set up here, which I'll click on. Uh, the main thing to note is that it's the mode is Hydra. Uh, the mix is 60, that's about 160, uh, which works quite well for all 40 BPM. Warp is 100%, density is 100%, and feedback's just up from where it normally is. The low, I just take a little bit out of the low. 
Uh, so that is the settings there if you want to copy them across. And that then gives me like a nice swimming reverb. So no matter what I do now, I've always got this massive, this massive sort of um, bed for the for the noise to sit on. So if I just touch a key, there we go. Let's get the um, mic freak back on the go. Sweet. So at the second, we're on the basic waves on the micro freak, which um, which are nice. But there's a couple of really, really lovely um, wavetables. So we will check them out. So Saw X is one of the ones that I really love. It's, it's super cool. So if I just bring down things like the, the, the different controls here, so the wave here, you can see on the display there is the saw mod. The timbre switch is the shape. Really nice. And then the shape here is the noise. And there's something about having the noise kind of modulating the oscillator. So you get this kind of random movement with the with the pitch just very slightly and it is just lovely, lovely. And also with the with the adding the noise to it, you get this sort of top end, this fizz that's um that's really, really, really nice to work with as well, especially for things like pads. You haven't got to go mad with it. There we go. There you go. Thank you very much for joining. That is that's the tutorial. <laughs> so you can see how simple. Once you get that big reverb on, and you get just a nice. Uh, I mean, the art, the, the micro freak is is really good for it. But we'll do another one in a second with Serum, uh, or maybe even um, I don't know. We'll try one of the ones out of. The, the, the principle is the same. The idea is the same. The steps are the same for creating pads. So we can do one with one of the default Ableton instruments. So just at the second, let's get. Let's get the uh, amplifier envelope set up. So let's get some release on here. Really lovely, really, really nice. Uh, so we've got the analog filter here, and at the moment it's set to low pass, as you can see on the on the. Um, Micro freak there. Let's turn that. Let's see what happens with that. So that's nice, but it, it's just a bit obvious, and I'm not a massive fan of obvious movement in pads and stuff like that. So let's have a play with some of these controls here. This wave and, and timbre, timbre, timbre. Okay, so that's making me think of uh, like a sync. Uh, the sync functions, and, I, and I'm once again not a massive fan of that, so let's try this time, bro. Okay, so let's get a little bit of movement happening with this, with this uh, time, bro. So what we'll do is we'll grab the, um, let's go to the audio effects, and let's go modulation um, here, and we'll grab the LFO. We'll put this in here and we will map it to the timbre and as you can see we've already got movement you can see on the display there we've got movement so I want this sync to the tempo and we're going to slow it down quite a lot it's still very obvious so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this 100% down That's quite nice. Nice. And then we could probably do the same kind of thing with this shape. So let's grab, let's assign the shape. So 38 is what we need to remember. So we literally just want to bring that down until we only come up to sort of 38. Here we go around there. I might even slow this LFO down some more. Oh, okay, so one of the things I haven't done is I need to turn this paraphonic mode on. So if I turn that on there, 
then we can now play four notes at once. Yeah, that's lovely. Really nice. Okay, so let's have a listen to just like a single note. So we'll go C3. Brilliant. And what we'll do is we will program in, let's change the page here. And we'll program in just like a 30 second long note of, um, of C3. There we go, insert that pretty quick. Send this out. And we'll just go C3. There. So let's give that a play through. Let's turn the cycle off. Nice. So what we'll do is we'll now just resample that. So let's go, yeah, resampling. Let's set record on that. Let's name this uh, micro freak. And we'll go underscore pad hyphen o one. So we know where we're at with it. Let's drag this out because make it things easier. And let's just now. So the way I set this up is I now go to like the bar before. So that 100%, I grab the, the the start point of this of this sound. Sometimes it can be finicky with it. Let that tower run out. There we go. So we now have this basically printed um, to here. So let's turn the microphone up for a second. And now let's have a listen to this. The volume looks like it's pretty low. And we can take this first bar off now. So there, and we'll just cycle it over this, this loop so that we know where we're at. So we've got basically, like I say, a direct print of the Micro Freak now with the reverb on it. And quite a nice bit of movement there. So what we can do is we can now basically grab a sampler. Uh, where are we? Instruments, sampler. And let's put this on this other MIDI track. And we'll drag this underneath the Micro Freak so we've got some sort of order to where we're at. We can drag this audio straight into the sampler and we'll solo this so that if we hit the, the play button by, by, by accident or anything, then we're not gonna get this happening. Uh, we can already see here that we are very quiet on the level, which is fine. So we'll just bring it up here. There we go. And let's just hit a couple of keys. And you can hear the movement on the individual notes in there, you know? So the first thing I'll do is turn snap on. The second thing I'll do is turn the interpolation to best interpolation. Um, and the reason for the best interpolation is, as far as I'm concerned, um, if I play it at C3, the quality is gonna stay the same as what's recorded. If I play it lower in pitch, it's obviously the quality is gonna degrade. If I play if I play any other pitches apart from C3, the quality is gonna is gonna waver. So with that best interpolation, it tries to keep the quality um, as good as possible across the keys. 
Um, so we can then go to the um, Filter Global page. We can now play with the envelope because we've just got a straight on off. Um, so we can now start to give it some, let's go like two seconds. Here we go, nearly three seconds. Really nice. Uh, another thing we need to do is we need to take this. In fact, we'll do that in a second. I'll show you why. So well, let's give it some release now. Let's go like that's nearly four seconds. Okay, so the this little R in the bottom here have me confused for a long time. So let's turn up our voices. Let's go 16 voices for a second. Uh, and let's give it just a touch more tail. There we go. Um, so basically if I press if I if I play a chord and I release it, play the same chord again, release it. Play the same chord again. You can hear there's no tail. Like as soon as the next chord comes in, if it's the same notes, it just cuts it off. Um, if I turn this off, it allows our tails to ring through. Obviously, the voice count is going to go up every time we play a chord. Um, so. It's a much smoother transition. So I would definitely, definitely 100% recommend um, remembering to turn that R off for a long time. I couldn't work out why my notes weren't were re-triggering rather than sort of playing out. Um, and that was exactly why. So there we go. So we've got a basic pad. I like that a lot. Um, so there's now a few different bits and pieces we can do with this. Uh, we've got no effects on it at the minute, so we can obviously add effects to it if we want to. Um, we have a few different functions. Because we, we specified that we, we've used C3, the pitch is, is perfect with our MIDI keyboard. So when I play C on the keyboard, C plays through the speakers, or for the headphones or whatever. Um, and that enables sampler to, um, the FM mode will now work correctly. Um, if you haven't played with the FM mode, you, you need to have your, your root note of the sample you put in set to C. Uh, and you can do that in a couple of ways. So sometimes my, my samples are recorded F. So I just make sure that this dial here is set to whatever my root key is. So at this second, we're on C3, so I've left that at C3. That enables us to turn on this oscillator mode, and we can now start to increase this volume, and we should get FM happening. nice um, super cool so we can now start to get even more textures happening uh, let's try the the course let's change this and see what happens let's go up uh, up to say two yeah let's just We can get this if we don't go to the extreme of like all the way up to zero, it's like zero dB on the volume, and we just introduce it. We can get some quite nice effects. Let's go back to one on here. Something really nice about it. Uh, so that's definitely something to play with and to bear in mind. Um, there's a couple of cool things we can do with that. One of them being the, if I go to the audio instruments, uh, modulators LFO. I can now specify that I want the volume to LFO. Um, it hasn't got to be, like I say, all the way extreme. So we can set this to the grid. We could turn this down to say eight. And we can now say, say that it's, not, it's only gonna go 50%, say. And 
that's just creating just that small bit of just something there, you know, just a touch of movement. Really, really nice. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll add, say, a delay onto this. Uh, grab delay, you, delay loop. Let's go the normal delay. It's my favorite delay. Uh, we'll turn the feedback down a touch and the dry just down a touch, and then we'll take the filter so that it's up a touch. I'm quite happy with it being on sixes for the divisions. Um, let's give that a. You can just hear that that movement throughout the whole thing. Really, really cool. Really cool. Uh, let's grab a reverb. Let's grab super massive. There we go. And let's once again let's put my preset on it. Default. There we go. Now let's listen to that. Let's go there. Really cool, really, really, really cool. So that, there you go. So that is, this is how I've been making my, my pads. So what I would do now with this is I would now, basically I would mute these off. So let's, once again, let's grab a C3, do that. Um, I would now flatten this. So if I go, it might be easier to record it in because we've got the LFO so we can be a bit more decisive about when the LFO is going to happen. So let's bring us down here. Specify that it's going to be a resampling. Get the record button. We know this is this. Let's double check what note we're playing. C3. It's fine. Um, and let's just have a quick look here. So it resets. Let's go. Okay. So let's go to here. We'll go the bar before again. Let's hit record. Let's turn the loop off. So you've got that nice movement across that pad. Super cool. There you go. So I would then double click on that. So we can see the, the wave file. We want to bring in that start point. So we gave it an extra bar's worth of um an extra bar's worth of, of time. Uh, and we can now bring the volume up on this. And we'll probably come up sort of six dB. Like that. And that should bring us up to a reasonable level. Solo this. It's a bloody helicopter above my house. What I'll do is I'll pause it and I'll come back to you. Okay, I think it's gone. Um, for the second anyway. I can still hear it out there, but anyway, we'll go with it. Um, so there we go. So we can now, yep, it is back a bit, but we'll see if we can get through this. Okay. And you know that when you play that across some keys, you're going to get all the movement between the different notes. Really, really cool. So let's give that a rename. And we'll go uh, processed underscore pad. 
hyphen O1, and we know we're right with that one. Uh, so we can now basically we'll group these together, uh, group, and we'll go Control R, pad hyphen O1 GRP. There you go, and we know we're right with that then. So we can close that up, we can turn it off, and we are good to go with the next pad. Let's take the record of that and the play button off of there. And this time, rather than going through um, the micro freak, let's use one of the built-in built Ableton. Um, I haven't played with a lot of these, you know. So let's have a look. Let's try something like the wavetable. As far as I'm aware, that's quite good. Yeah, nice. Nice, okay. So a simple noise once again. So it might be worth us just grabbing the, um, where are we? Plugins, Arteria, not Arteria, uh, Supermassive. We'll put the preset back on. Default once again, exactly the same sentence again. And then let's just try. Nice. Okay, so let's have a look. So we've got basic shapes here. Oi. Okay, so I don't have a clue what these are. So let's have a, let's go so, so dual. Okay, nice. I'm assuming this is the filter. Nice. So let's go envelope two. So how do we assign this? I'm assuming that's to do with triggering, looping. And if you can hear that in the background. Helicopter. Uh, so let's have a look at these warp modes and stuff. Let's take the filter up. Nice. Okay, so the warp is nice. A little bit of the fold is nice, and then we've got tune in there. So that's pretty cool. So if I come to oscillator two and turn that on, we'll go the same again. So saw dual one. Let's detune this. And let's detune this by ten. Um what have we got? Is there a mixer for this? Okay, so that's to do with scanning, wave scanning. Uh volumes there. Volumes there, modern. Let's go modern. Okay. So let's open up this. Visualize it. Oh. Ooh. Okay. So basics. Do we have panning for these? Detune. So I've detuned the two oscillators. Right, let's go to the the matrix and filter one frequency. We'll go envelope two. Nice. I like the way you can see what's what's actually happening here. And then mod source is envelope two. Try a couple of chords. <laughs> Lovely. Right, so let's try, let's give this some more sustain, some release. Let's have a look at the main envelope. Let's take the sustain all the way up. Let's give it some release there as well. So this is the amplifier. It's better. So we have the amount of notes here. We also have a unison mode. Okay, that's quite interesting. Um, let's have a little look here. So let's go.
feeling that. Okay, so we'll stick it with a low pass and we will. How long does it stay open for? Okay, so it, it needs to it needs to raise more. So it wants to I don't think it wants to go all the way open, but I think with the matrix mode here, I think we can now Okay, so once again, let's now grab. Um, I thought I just saw pan in there, but it's not. Um, okay, so let's grab the volume poly guide. Oh, okay, I should imagine then it's something to do with what we can do here, is it? Anyway, doesn't matter. I'm not that bothered. Okay, cool. So let's grab the. Let's draw in a note. So let's go once again to to there. Insert a MIDI clip and let's change the font size. Draw in a long note. There we go. And we'll just do that. Dogs now. Because it's a hot out at the moment, I've got to keep my window open. Okay, so let's have a look at the envelope again. And let's bring the 19 seconds might be a little excessive. Okay, and let's have a look at these other these other settings now. So let's go warp, oscillator to warp, and let's take this up to say 50. And let's go to oscillator one, warp, and let's take that down to say 50. Actually what we could do in fact is we could turn oscillator one warp up. Six voices. Nice. Okay, so let's once again let's give this an audio channel and we will now go resampling and we hit record on there and then we'll just record that in. Excuse any clicks. I've got a hard drive that's on its way out. Let's undo that, sorry. I want to take it from here. Let the towel down there. There. 
Brilliant. So what we'll do now is we'll grab once again, we'll grab a sampler. Next channel down, we'll grab this audio, put this onto here, solo this, and we will just now adjust some points here. Let's give it some attack on this. So there's our original pitch. Once again, turn the R off, put some release. Attack. Nice, so all the attacks are a little bit slow here, so let's move this start point up. Okay, once again, let's go snap. Let's turn the interpolation to best interpolation. Nice. Okay, so we need to look at the amount of notes that we've got. So six just isn't enough. Let's go 16 on there. Let's take the, the curve up on the um, release. Let's give it some more really, a more attack here, sorry. What a nice rounded pad. Once again, that's completely dry. So we can grab the, um, where am I, plugins. So I had a super massive on that. And we can now, once again, the default preset for me. And then. Really nice, really, really nice. So we'll once again, we'll get this ready for the export. So we will now draw in a note of C3. So I'll grab this one, copy this down. We'll just double check this is C3. Yep. So we've got C3 in there, that's all good. We will add another audio track, specify that it's resampling, get the record button on there, and we could even copy that. Paste that and just change it to pad two. And there you go. Hit record on there. Once again, the bar before. So that one finished a little earlier than the other one, but it's no massive stress. It's still sort of a good a good length note. But that was really quiet. That's the only thing I would say about that one was it was pretty quiet. But once again, we can bring up the we can bring up the volume here. So I would have gone 6 dB normally, but we'll just bring it up until we're roughly happy. Solo that. Take off this beginning bar here. Once again, let's group these and we will go control R, pad, hyphen O2 and the group. And then we can close that up. We can turn that off and unsolo that. And then we've now got our two pads ready for exporting to be put into any sample pack. They're single notes, so it's C3. So that'll now go. Um, you can put that into any sampler, it'll play lovely. So there you go, I hope that's been insightful and helpful. I hope that's given you an insight as to how I've been, how I've been working, how I do work. Just come back to this page here. Um, much love, thank you for joining me, and I will see you in the next one. Big up.